Today we will determine the layout of the stand, build a basic base, paint all the elements, do weathering, prepare background, do detailing and add some extra stuff at the end. Hello my friends, I'm Lucas and this is Cold Demons PL How to Paint series. As I said in the introduction today I will deal with the Panther stand. It will be a section of the street from Mach 1 which I decided to enrich with a fairly large structure of metal stairs from Mini Art and a few smaller elements to make it look more interesting. Of course the best material for the base will be balsa planks and finally a superb plate with the title made by one of my patrons. When it comes to patrons, it's perfect time to say mega thanks for all of them because they support my work and joined the Coldemons PL team. Thank you guys so much. If you also want to be my patron, check what benefits you can have when you support me. You can find the link in the description and at the end of this video. Don't waste your time and join the team. And subscribe to the channel of course. Let's get to work. To begin with I built the stairs. The quality is well known and the same was here. Such a large set will undoubtedly be enough for a few small model stands. Also if you have the option to spend several euros or dollars on it I recommend it. The preparation of all the elements is quite boring but it's exactly like with panther or tiger wheels. Turn off your thinking, turn on your imagination and a CD with your favorite band. Resin pavement with sidewalk is a product from Mach 1. As you will see in a moment, it's perfect for the task I'm going to use it for here. If you want to check more of their products, just click the link in the description. From white balsa boards, I cut the sides of the stand, each is 5 cm high. Once they were cut to the appropriate size, they are glued to the stand. The best way to fix all together is using the super glue, but you have to be careful because it's very easy to stick to the elements that are currently being built. Everything turned out smoothly and the stand doesn't rock. It's good. In addition, thin decorative strips will definitely be useful and, in my opinion, they are a nice finishing touch on the base. In the interior of the base it's worth strengthening all joints using remnants of balsa and super glue. I don't care about the appearance of this structure, first of all it should be strong. It's also designed to keep the resin pavement in one shape because as you know the resin deforms under the influence of various factors, so to prevent this it's worth helping it to keep the right shape. Ok, the street is even so you can safely close the box. I paste a piece of cardboard on the bottom. Of course it's easiest to place it on previously glued supports. You saw them a few seconds ago. When I stick this piece I have a habit of adding non-slip pads to the bottom so that the shelf, table or anything else won't be scratched by the edges of the stand. I highly recommended this solution. Now a bit of sanding. The balsa is very soft and easy to process. The disadvantage is that it's quite dusty so the main sanding should be done somewhere on the balcony for example and only finishing and cleaning in the workshop. As I mentioned, the title plate was cut with a laser in a balsa by one of my patrons. I haven't seen anyone else use it and show it in pla plastic public, so please tell me what do you think about it. For me the effect is great. I sanded the edges a bit and cut the bottom for better PVA glue sticking effect. I spread it over the entire surface and glued it to the wall. The pencil was used as a distance for me because its size was perfect for this task. That's all for the main building. Cheers! I was joking. Safety first and now we can spray the foundations. I had several cans with different amounts so just to finish them. The background elements are primed so now I can start with the stairs. I have always remembered the appearance of such steel construction as dark brown with polished edges and a bit of rust here and there. 
This is also how I decided to paint my model. A mixture of black and brown was perfect for this purpose and the whole thing has been covered with this color, even the handrails which will be painted in a completely different shade in a moment. But before that a bit of weathering on the steel surfaces of the stairs. I used two weathering paints for this purpose. Burnt metal as the first layer and in a moment asphalt street dirt. As you can see I didn't count the amount and didn't care too much about the size of the stains and their arrangement. Basically I was following a pattern but as you will see in a moment the subtle stains left after this work justify this approach to this task. They certainly added an interesting look but didn't change the overall color of the stairs too much. And of course I was assisted by the accelerator, I can't imagine wasting time waiting for it to dry freely. A bit of rust is the dark rust from the same series of paints. You have to control it and apply depending on your needs. At this stage I put the stairs aside and started painting small elements that will form the background. The whole set of milk cans comes from Plus model and it's resin with PE elements. Nice accessory and space filling. The road sign on the pole and those hung on the stairs are from the mini art set. Of course they are filled with decals. The railing is waiting to be painted. Initially I thought about grey but decided to use light blue. For better contrast and grey will be used on the pavement and sidewalk. So enough of this color on the base. I applied a dozen of painting effects on the stairs. It's known that the paint can sometimes tip over and unexpected painting effects may appear. I also decided to lighten the supporting poles a bit. That's why I painted them white and more precisely ivory. After adding wash and rust they darkened a little and there was a characteristic coating, but thanks to this they look natural. In addition there was also the destruction of paint and dark brown was perfect for this. The majority of the chips were painted with a sponge for the correct shape of the damage and to save time. Only on the handrails I have worked a little with the brush. The effect is super realistic, isn't it? Teddy bear, lost by a frightened child, builds the dramatic atmosphere, am I right? We go down and start painting the cobblestones. I used the paint I had left from the railing painting, adding dark grey to it and I painted the stones with this mix. As I still have the bit left I added white and light grey and painted the sidewalk. I know from experience that this color scheme will be sufficient. I colored the individual tiles on the pavement with different colors for greater contrasts. Half of it will be covered anyway. The same with the street. Here I used some smoke black and changed the color of quite large pieces of the stones. In my opinion the effect is great. As if that wasn't enough I decided to add white stripes. I don't know if it's in line with the reality of what it was then and if such signs were actually painted on the street, but for the purposes of the stand it will certainly look nice. I used the same idea on my Berlin diorama which was a much larger base and here too, these stripes added variety to the surface. The easiest and fastest way to do it is using the masking tape and paint the stripes with a sponge. Thanks to this... With a sponge? No, with an old brush. Thanks to this they will look even but at the same time the paint surface won't be as perfect as painted with an airbrush. Just a curb and we can add stairs and small elements. I was worried how they would stick because of their construction 
but after filling the square base plate with pieces of bus and gluing them there, the surface on which I could use the glue grew a lot. Just in case I also prepared a transparent piece of plastic profile for supporting during storage or transport. I cut boards from veneers and glued together with PVA glue. I especially used two types of wood to vary the texture and thickness of the boards. Of course there are also nail marks on them. The most time consuming was to cut it properly so that the fence would fit under the steps of the stairs. As soon as I managed to do it, the whole thing was treated with a wash for wood. You can have a little fun with the intensity of this effect and so I did. In some places I added it definitely more and caused the boards look almost black. I set it into place with super glue, a little detail to break the homogeneous appearance and I can say that this item is ready. We start weathering the entire stand, of course the wash at the beginning. To do it on a surface like here I first put the tin on the selected piece and then started applying the wash. Thanks to this it feels better in the recesses. Of course after all the grooves were flooded the whole thing was dried with an accelerator. Before I started dusting the pavement I covered the entire base with masking tape. This was planned to reduce soiling of the stand and workbench. It didn't work out but about this in a moment. I have thoroughly dusted the entire street including the footings of the stairs. In addition I also put pigment on the steps of course in a limited range. The whole thing was spread out with a white soft brush. And what next? With an ordinary paper tissue exactly the same I use for tarps, I wiped the excess pigment off the pavement. On the stairs I used a thinner to stick it to the surface. But why didn't I use this method on the street? Because earlier the excess of the pigment had been gently blown off the surface and now I could use my sweaty fingers to brush off the stones. Disgusting but effective. Dirty fingers, like a child. I removed the cover from the masking tape and unfortunately a little bit of it didn't work. It needs to be clean. First I blew the pigment with the accelerator and then with more pressure using the airbrush. At the end it's enough to gently wipe the remaining pigment with a finger to stick it to the skin. Easy peasy. What is left to finish this base is to polish the stairs. Of course not all but in places where previously pedestrians could do it by walking every day. For me the best for this are the silicone tips, round and flat which do the job perfectly. Of course I put them on gunmetal pigment. This can also be done with a finger, dirty or sweaty or a pencil. You have to try which effect will suit you best. Similarly, street elements such as the manhole and drain grate also required a bit of shine. The last element that will enrich the base will be an abandoned parachute and a welk bike drop container. And again I will use a paper tissue and the same method as when working on a tarp. But how? Let's make an arrangement that the parachute will only roughly resemble a real one. It's not about exact mapping but marking presence, that's what I would say. All because I didn't find a good photo that I could follow, only one picture of a packed parachute that protruded a bit from the cover. Nothing. You have to turn on your imagination. And what I have to do is a canopy, the straps connecting its elements, the lines and the container itself. 
maybe it's a piece of cake, but maybe not. All in all I can say that it took me several hours. Before I started working on the parachute I glued the container from the set that I showed earlier when making the work bike. So, from a dried piece of paper I cut out triangles and glued them together with PVA glue. The shape will be far from the original, but that's not the point. Then I attach stripes that imitate the joining of individual parts. From a thin wire I cut out pieces which I stick to the side of the parachute. Such a ready element is soaked again. Remember the salt bun? And I begin to lay it on the surface of the stairs. Of course diluted glue is needed to hold the folds in the desired alignment. It's important that it looks relatively natural but at the same time tempting the eye of the viewer. I know that the parachute is very thin and the material is very, let's say, it's fluid. I don't know if it's proper word, but here I have to build a narration, the atmosphere and the material limitations aren't helping. Hope you understand my point. As soon the paper is relatively dry and sticks to the surface, you can lay the lines. There is some work to do with it, but they are very important because they create the detailing of the scene. I guess I can say that. I put them on super glue and started painting. In some places I had to use a flashlight to get to the hardly visible places. Hardcore. Apart from the fact that I didn't have photos of the parachute, I also didn't find a clear answer of what the container was made of. Either it was made of metal plate or plywood. I put on the plate especially after finding this photo from some museum. Although during the war it's possible that due to lack of material they made it from plywood. Of course after painting I applied the wash which emphasized all the nooks and crannies. And finally I covered the entire parachute with matte varnish. Ok, that's all I have prepared for you today. Hope it was interesting and you had a good time. Please subscribe, click the like and check my Patreon site. Cheers!